unlike conditional if statement, a for loop didn't have an init statement. This sometimes might have led to subtle errors. Let me show you what I mean. Rust tracks object lifetimes, but C++ doesn't have such capability. This means each temporary object might be destroyed while still in use. Let's first see how it looks like in an if statement. So let's imagine we write a statement like this. If auto w equals some function called foo and an empty body. w here is a temporary and will disappear at the end of the statement body. Here. Is this a problem? Well, in general, yeah, but in this case, not really. Why? Because once the body is executed, it won't be executed again. So W can safely be destroyed. But what about for loops? Let's write a range based for. So for auto W in some imaginary collection returned by foo function call here. Again, seems not to be a problem in this case. The loop body gets executed multiple times, but a single instance of w here can only be accessed within a single iteration in this block. So far, so good. Let's modify that code a little and see what happens. Let's say we are still calling foo to return some object, but now we want to iterate over something inside that object. Let's just add an imaginary item call here. Looks quite similar to the previous version. And you might actually omit the potential problem present. And there can be a problem indeed. And a really big one. So can you instantly explain what's wrong in this statement? Let's write a full example and see it in details. So first, let's start with some example struct widget, which contains a vector of ints and the method called items, which returns a reference to that vector. Now let's create a foo function. This function will simply return an empty widget object. What's important is that foo returns widget by value, which means it will disappear when no longer needed, just like in the previous example. The problem is we're still holding on to a reference to internal data and we're executing the body multiple times since we're in a for loop. If we take a look at this assembly, we can see widget being destroyed before we access the vector. Here is the destructor call, but here is vector access, also here. As you can see, this is a guaranteed undefined behavior. One solution to this problem would be moving the temporary out of the loop. So we can write auto widget equals foo and simply use widget he ah, widget not widget, widget. Now widget gets destroyed after the loop. You can see that right here, just before the return statement. This approach can have an unwanted side effect. The object might actually live too long, depending on the enclosing block. This can really be a problem for object use, example, for locking. The lock might be held for far too long. This is why now with C20, we have another solution available in its statement in the loop itself. We can take this statement here and simply add it in the loop here. Now widget lifetime is properly tied to the loop and there's no risk of undefined behavior when iterating over items. The assembly output confirms this. Here we have vector access another vector axis, here we have the loop body itself, and here we have the destructor well outside the loop. But note, it's still before the return statement. If there were additional instructions before return, for example, auto i equals 
2, for example, we can see the widget is destroyed well before those additional instructions get executed, while in our previous case, the destructor would have been called all the way at the end. So now the general suggestion is to use int statements when iterating over uncertain function results, or in general, when dealing with potentially temporary objects and you want to limit their lifetime to the loop itself, use an int statement. Don't pull the object outside of the loop because you might encounter another class of errors, while you might not even expect. Okay then, I hope you found this informative. I hope you now know what init statements in range-based for loops are. If you have any questions, post them down below, click subscribe, and as usual, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.